Darkrai is an amazing Pokemon in competitive Generation 6 Ubers, where the Ubers tier is a tier above standard play, where powerful legendaries are allowed to roam free. Pokemon can still get banned from Ubers, like how Mega Rayquaza was, but generally the standard is much higher to ban something from the tier meant for banned Pokemon. Darkrai is strong, fast, but also controversial. It's not actually banned from Ubers, but there have been notable tournaments that are called No Darkrai Tournaments because they've banned it unofficially. This is all because of one move and its implications, Dark Void. Let's take a look at why Darkrai is considered controversial in Generation 6 Ubers, but not in any other generation. Also, before we continue, make sure to subscribe if you're not already. We are almost at 100k subscribers and I'm really excited about that. Before Gen 7, Dark Void was a move that had an 80% chance to put you to sleep, which is a bit of a double-edged sword. It's good enough to be reliable, unlike a move like Hypnosis, but it's also low enough to be frustrating, but we'll get to that a bit later. At its core, sleep is arguably an overpowered mechanic in itself because it messes with a fundamental aspect, which is time. Every turn you can't do something but your opponent can is huge. At the beginning, in earlier generations of Pokemon, Getting put to sleep isn't as big a deal because your time is less valuable. There aren't a lot of good moves, so you make less progress per turn. If you miss a turn or two, it's not a big deal. Maybe you get hit by Body Slam a few times. But in modern generations, there are so many good moves and sleep becomes very deadly as a result. If your opponent can't move for three turns in a row, in a modern generation, that can be converted straight to a game win. This is something you probably wouldn't notice while playing in-game versus AI who hit you with tackle every turn, but it's very apparent when you play another human being who can chain strategies together just like you. On top of being actually good, sleep is already a very luck-based mechanic too. You can be immobilized for up to three turns. It's high variance and unpredictable, and the difference between one turn of sleep and three is massive. Sleep is the ultimate combo of being really good being really high variance, and being relatively easy to do, unlike something like Freeze. Simply having access to reliable sleeping moves can turn a bad Pokemon into a good one. But here's the thing, Darkrai is already a good Pokemon. Darkrai is a powerful threat on its own. It's fast and has a good move pool. It's a little weak by uber standards, but it can hold a life orb and can nasty plot and has a move like Sludge Bomb to hit Fairy type Pokemon and Thunder to hit Ho-Oh. Its ability Bad Dreams also racks up damage against sleeping opponents. But with access to Dark Void, Darkrai becomes one of the most controversial Pokemon in the tier. Darkrai is innately threatening enough that you have to react to it before you lose, but having to deal with Dark Void introduces a lot of variance. It puts so much pressure and it becomes a guessing game. What if you switch into something that can take on sleep, but can't take on Darkrai after a nasty plot? Lumberries usually don't work effectively because Darkrai is so fast. If you switch in a Lumberry Pokemon on Dark Void, chances are Darkrai can just use Dark Void again because it outspeeds you. Sleep Talk is one of the better solutions, but even that has its own issues. For example, Sleep Talk on Xerneas is a nice option as a move on Choice Scarf Xerneas or in a bulky Rest Talk Geomancy Xerneas. But after the first turn of Sleep Talking, it becomes more variance whether or not to sleep talk because you have the chance of waking up too. The 80% of Dark Void also adds complications too, especially versus choice locked sleep talkers. They can predict Dark Void, lock into sleep talk, but not actually go to sleep and automatically they're at a big disadvantage. The Xerneas mentioned earlier falls into other problems too. If your choice scarf Xerneas and they substitute on the switch, now they can force you to Moonblast and you can get Dark Voided, thereby stopping the possibility of sleep talk. If you're Rest Talk Xerneas and they Nasty Plot as you switch, you just die to Sludge Bomb. Mega Diancy can lose in the same way too. The whole situation becomes a maddening game of variance that you can't opt out of because Darkrai is one of the biggest threats in the metagame. If your opponent brings Darkrai, you're going to have to play a game that will be influenced by Dark Void, forcing the Nightmare of Sleep mechanics onto you. Ironically, Gen 5 is known for having broken sleep mechanics, but it actually helps out here. Sleep resets when you switch out in Gen 5, which is bad when you want to try and wake up, but good for when you want to reliably use Sleep Talk. Sleep Talking is much better in Gen 5, because when you switch out and switch in again, you know you have one guaranteed move. It's actually pretty interesting how Darkrai isn't as controversial in Gens 4 and 5, where you think it would be more overpowered because there's less Pokemon. 
Steel resisted Dark in Gen 4 and 5, so that's a big deal, but it's also about hazards and pace of play. Choice Scarf is much more common in earlier generations because there's no Geomancy Xerneas, Yveltal, or powerful Mega Pokemon to set up on Choice Scarf locked Pokemon or shut them down entirely. Without Defog, hazards are easier to keep up, which is bad for a frail Pokemon like Darkrai. Fighting-type Arceus is also good in Gen 5, where there's no Fairy-types and Darkrai doesn't have a move like Psychic. Make no mistake, Darkrai is still a top Pokemon in Gen 4 and 5, it's just a bit more manageable. The thing though, even though I've been hyping up Darkrai a lot, is that Darkrai is not overtly broken either. It's not on the Mega Rayquaza tier of Pokemon. Sleep Talk on powerful Pokemon like Ho-Oh and Kyogre do indeed do the job okay enough to be considered a check. It just means that you're going to play a game that might come down to luck. Mega Diancie can bounce back Dark Void if it predicts right, and you can try and use Choice Scarf Pokemon to outspeed it, because by legendary standards Darkrai is pretty frail. Arceus has extreme speed, and there's also Pokemon like Klefki and sometimes Blissey depending on the moveset. Mega Gengar can outspeed and trap it, and Mega Mewtwo Y outspeeds and has Insomnia, although Mewtwo Y isn't as popular as other Mega Pokemon. There are many ways to beat it, but the main criticism is that a lot of ways to beat it enter the roulette wheel of sleep mechanics or other high variance decisions, and that's not very competitive. It's controversial because some people want it banned for these uncompetitive reasons, while others don't want it banned because it's not a truly broken, unstoppable Pokemon. Darkrai forces in luck, but that's kind of what Pokemon is about, a game involving probability. You do have options available to beat it on paper and in practice, and there may be luck involved, but you should just get over it, that's part of the game. As it stands, it doesn't look like enough people want Darkrai banned, although there is a vocal minority that does. Opinions and ideas always change, so maybe in the future it will, but for now it doesn't meet the high standard people have for banning something from Ubers. Fortunately, future generations don't even have to worry about Darkrai. Dark Void was nerfed to 50% accuracy in Generation 7, which makes it basically unusable. Generation 8 doesn't even have Darkrai in the game, and Dark Void was removed too. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about the arguments related to luck. Luck is intrinsic to Pokemon, no one is denying that, but strategies that rely entirely on luck or introduce excessive amounts of it are considered to be not something you want in a competitive game. Ideally, you want a game to be as skill-based as possible. Probability management is a skill in itself, but games that become mainly about how lucky you get are avoided, and raw or excessive luck strategies are usually banned, like one-hit KO moves, double team, and bright powder, to name a few. Where do you stand? Where do you draw the line between what should and shouldn't be allowed with respect to luck? Let me know down in the comments below.